Customising your weapon is all part of the fun when crafting a loadout. There's loads of different gun attachments and scopes all spread out over the Battlefield games, and they're all designed to assist you while you play, with some directly altering a weapon's stats, and others giving you unique things to play around with instead. But out of all the cool stuff you can pick from to add onto your guns, there's also quite a few attachments and customization options that just seem a bit crap. Stuff that's usually not really going to help you out all that much, or might even hinder your performance as you play the game. Obviously, this one's going to be a pretty subjective topic, because everything in Battlefield does still serve a specific purpose, even if it doesn't seem all that effective in the eyes of a lot of players, including myself. A lot of it's down to personal preferences and playstyles, but some attachments just don't really seem worth using over other, potentially more useful things, and it's some of these weapon attachments and customization options that we're going to be taking a look at today, in this video. So without further ado, here's my top 10 worst weapon attachments in the Battlefield games. First attachment of the video is the Bayonet, but more specifically, the one from Battlefield 5. In that game, attachments came in the form of gun specialisations, with the Bayonet being available to be used by quite a few specific weapons. It functioned in a pretty similar way to how it did in Battlefield 1, where you just activated a charging mechanic, causing you to run forward and shout your bloody head off. If you happened to run into an enemy player, then unfortunately for them, they'd wind up stuck on the end of that Bayonet, probably feeling a bit annoyed. In some rare cases, throwing the controller at the TV. It might have been the same kind of concept in both Battlefields 1 and 5, but Battlefield 1's bayonet could be equipped on a lot more guns, and didn't really force you to sacrifice anything by equipping it, because there was nothing else to really equip as an alternative. Battlefield 5's bayonet is totally usable, but it just doesn't feel quite as effective as it used to, possibly down to the hit reg, time to kill feeling a bit quicker, and just down to how the game generally plays in comparison to Battlefield 1, with it often feeling a bit like a copy and paste afterthought, rather than something that's properly been built into the game. Either way though, you've still got to sacrifice another specialisation if you want to equip it, as the bayonet usually appears at the bottom of most weapon spec trees, with the other option usually always seeming to be more useful. With all that said though, it's still a pretty overpowered thing to use in Firestorm, if you can find anyone else on the server to stab with it, that is. At number 9 is actually a certain site that you'll be able to find on quite a few of the different weapons in Battlefield 1 an attachment called the Lens Sight that's automatically equipped on most of the optical, carbine and defensive variants. Now I've got to admit, this thing isn't terrible, but it just doesn't really feel all that great to use either in a lot of situations, with a lot of guns. It's not only one of the more obstructive scopes in the series, having all that framework sticking up from the gun's body, but it's also awkward in the sense that the Lens Sight sometimes seems to be subjected to quite a lot of visual recoil, especially if it happens to be on a fully automatic weapon. The aiming reticle in the middle of the sight does seem to bounce around quite a lot, often making it seem a bit inconsistent and trickier to use in sub gunfights, sometimes making a weapon feel like it's got more recoil than it actually does. Once you get the hang of the way the scope works, and how it likes to dance around while you fire away, the lens sight can still be effective, with it giving you some extra zoom and working together with some of the bonuses that certain variants provide you with. It just feels a little bit clumsy at times, especially considering a lot of the weapon's stock iron sights in Battlefield 1 actually give you a clearer sight picture tend to feel less obstructive and generally make it easier to track targets with, while keeping the bullets whizzing by. If you ever want to stand out like a sore thumb when you're firing your weapon, then look no further than Battlefield Hardline's AP Tracer rounds. These are basically armour-piercing bullets that sound a lot cooler than they actually are, mainly just there to counter the mechanic class's armoured insert gadgets, and deal a little bit more damage to armoured vehicles. That might sound like a pretty useful thing to have, but when you think about it, the tracer rounds are actually going to be worthless against most of the enemies you'll be up against. The armoured insert is only available on one class, and all that's going to do is let you survive an extra bullet or two to the chest should you equip it. The AP bullets just pretend that insert isn't there, but it's not going to increase the damage you dish out to anyone, nor is it going to make the gun any deadlier or increase its range. If anything, it actually makes the maximum damage lower on assault rifles against non-armoured targets which you'll be coming into contact with much more frequently. Of course, the AP rounds can still occasionally be effective in some gunfights, helping to level the playing field against some mechanic players, but this also comes at the cost of the bullets emitting a bright, highly visible tracer path, letting everyone on the server see exactly where you're firing from. Definitely not a good thing. It can sometimes make the weapon feel a bit trickier to use too, because those long, cloudy red tracer paths can be seen by yourself too in ADS, sometimes getting in the way of your view and kind of making you feel like you're using a friggin' Star Wars blaster. 
and with the AP rounds acting as an accessory, that also means that you won't be able to equip some of the other stuff that might be more useful, like an extended magazine, laser sights, or a stock, helping to increase accuracy and reduce some of that spread. Next up on the list is Battlefield 4's Flash Hider, which is easily the worst version of that attachment in any of the games it's featured in. This attachment's sole purpose is to reduce muzzle flash, which is going to help to make your firing signature less visible to enemies and sometimes make a weapon feel easier to aim with, because it's not going to be flashing in your face like crazy when you open fire. It doesn't hide you from the minimap like a suppressor would, but it still allows your weapon to retain its range, while improving its sight picture when shooting. Not a bad attachment as a whole, because it does give you a few good reasons to use it, but in Battlefield 4 it actually has more negative qualities than positive. Battlefield 3's Flash Hider did all the stuff you'd expect it to, but it also slightly reduced vertical recoil too, at the penalty of increasing hipfire spread a little bit, sort of acting like a toned down compressor with flash hiding effects. In Battlefield Hardline, the Flash Hider literally just reduced the muzzle flash, and didn't alter the guns in any statistical way, generally making it a win-win attachment, without any notable downsides. But Battlefield 4's Flash Hider is the only version that's going to negatively impact a weapon's performance rather than improve it giving you a 17% slower spread decrease while aiming down sights, and no other statistical advantage. It'll still do all the typical stuff that a flash hider does, but it'll generally make a weapon statistically worse, while only giving you a slight benefit of reducing that flash. Not exactly a fantastic trade-off, especially considering you'll be taking up one of those barrel attachment slots, preventing you from picking something more useful instead. In 6th place, we're heading over to Battlefield 5 with those nasty looking aperture sights. The problem with the aperture is that pretty much every other optical attachment you can choose from is just generally better and clearer. It's not entirely useless, but it's just massively overshadowed by all the other stuff you can pick from. The aperture sight just gives you a 2 times magnification, which is only a 0.5 times increase over the weapon's standard iron sights, so they're not really going to give you all that much of a zoom advantage, and they're mainly just going to be there for cosmetic reasons. So to choose these optics over the others, you'd have to have a pretty bad taste, because the sight itself takes up a large area of the screen, limits your field of view due to it blurring everything on the screen that isn't in the scope, plus it's also got a bit of an annoying tint around its sight that shakes around quite a lot when you open fire, creating a bit of a distraction. Not very pleasant to look at, and definitely not very pleasant to aim with. A lot of the weapons that the aperture sight is available for also usually have access to a much clearer, less obstructive free time sight, aka the medium range scope, which in most cases is a miles better choice. It only zooms in a little bit more, so it's not massively different regarding its magnification level, but that free time sight is just a straight upgrade in clarity and precision, generally being less obstructive, not blurring the edges of your screen, and swapping out that little hooped foresight for a much more accurate scope reticle. Staying with Battlefield 5 for the time being, with a weapon specific specialisation option that just seems a little bit too situational for it to be really all that effective. The Type 11 light machine gun's got access to its very own exclusive specialisation called Top Up, which essentially allows you to simply top the gun's hopper up with strips, cutting down tactical reload times. Sounds pretty cool on paper, but there's a massive catch. Although it sounds like a pretty similar thing to Battlefield 1's Perino 1908, the Type 11's top up spec only lets you restock the hopper if you reloaded a multiple of 5. So, for instance, if you're firing off the gun and you just so happen to have either 5, 10, 15, 20, or 25 rounds left over in the weapon at that specific time, then that top up spec will come into action, and you'll be able to shave off a little bit of time off that reload. Otherwise, you'll just perform a full fat reload where you'll need to replace the whole hopper instead. This makes the top up specialization extremely circumstantial because you're not always going to be landing on a multiple of 5 when you stop shooting, so you can't really depend on it to save your ass, even if you really need it to. It's probably one of the most contextual, unreliable things you can equip on a weapon, but at the same time, because of the way specialisations and attachments work in Battlefield 5, you kind of need to use it if you want to equip the gun's recoil buffer, which a lot of people like to have to reduce vertical kick. Either way though, the Type 11's top up spec is a pretty dumb idea, and it would have been a lot more effective if it functioned like Battlefield 1's Perino. Next up is the Canted Iron Sights attachment from Battlefield 4 and Hardline, something that's hardly ever going to be worth using unless you want to be a bit of a hipster. Now, the Canted Iron Sight is one of those things that looks pretty swanky, but is not very practical in most gunfights. 
they let you swap between your standard optics and an open ring and blade sight, which kinda looks a bit like the M16's irons. Not exactly the cleanest looking iron sights in Battlefield 4, with there being quite a lot of stuff to look past to see your targets ahead. And because you've also got those optics attached to your gun too, that's going to block your vision more so and limit your field of view. Despite not really giving you a very good sight picture, the canted iron sights might seem a little bit more usable on DMRs or in combination with some night vision optics, but otherwise they don't really give you a very big reason to equip them, with there being other accessories that'll probably be more helpful and less situational. The canted iron sights also appear in Battlefield Hardline too, where they're arguably even worse. It does the same thing that it did in Battlefield 4, but can sometimes seem more obstructive and harder to aim with, because you're sort of aiming with a ball sat on a block. Battlefield Hardline's got a canted red dot sight attachment, which is a hell of a lot clearer to aim with, so that kind of makes the canted iron sights irrelevant, with there being a better alternative available to choose from. In third place is a weapon attachment that a lot of you guys probably won't even know existed in the first place. The Breaching Rounds in Battlefield Hardline, which basically just gives you a fancy way to open doors. These are only available on shotguns, and only really come in handy if you come across an entrance that's been sabotaged, but that's literally about the only time it's going to really be useful. Firing the Breaching Round off looks like it's going to do an absolute shed load of damage to enemies, looking like the gun's bloody exploding when you fire the thing off. But that's all just for show, because it's only really going to be lethal at point blank range, with the projectiles blowing up after a short distance, pretty much making them ineffective beyond. After firing off a breaching round, you're automatically going to switch over to your normal shells afterwards, so at least you don't have to manually switch ammo types on the fly if you do decide to breach a door with one. They don't do a bad job of destroying things and blowing holes through thin cover, but in most cases the breaching rounds are generally going to be a bit pointless especially considering you have to sacrifice something else like a laser sight, which is going to improve hipfire accuracy. Often a really useful attachment to use with shotguns, where you're often going to be relying on hipfire more often in close quarters. In second place is another shotgun attachment, though this one can be found in Battlefield 4, the duck build choke. Now what you've got here is an attachment that actually makes your gun less accurate, reducing your chances of killing an enemy in a single shot which is never a good thing when we're talking about shotguns. It's designed to flatten the spread of your buckshot, so that the pellets fly out more horizontally, dispersing them over a wider span, so they can potentially hit multiple enemies all bundled up close together. The problem is, this also means that less pellets are going to go where you want them to, when you're shooting at a lone target, down to the spread being a lot wider and less accurate, reducing the weapon's effective range even more, thus generally being counterproductive in most scenarios. Perhaps not too bad if you happen to catch a few enemies out in a tight corridor on Operation Locker, but otherwise the duck pill is just going to make your boomstick feel less reliable and weaker in most gunfights, especially if you equip it on one of those less spammable pump action shotguns, which is really going to struggle to get enough buckshot downrange quick enough to deal with several targets at once. The other choke options are going to tighten the spread of the pellets, so most of the time equipping one of those instead is going to be a no brainer. The duck bill is far too situational for it to even be considered as an effective weapon attachment, only being useful in certain rare cases. So my number one worst weapon attachment in the Battlefield games simply has to be the 338 Magnum rounds from Battlefield Hardline. These are only actually available on two of the guns in the game, the AWM and the R700 sniper rifles for the professional class, and being able to select a heavier cartridge might sound quite inviting especially when it tempts you with extra damage, which is always going to sound like something you should probably want to equip. But don't be fooled into thinking these rounds are going to turn your rifles into god guns, because they often actually cause more problems than they fix. The magnum rounds are going to boost the damage a bit, but only in closer ranges up to about 20 to 25 meters, basically extending your sniper's one hit kill range within shorter sightlines, but only if you hit the other guy in the torso. As a trade off, your fire rate and reloads are going to be 50% slower and it's still not going to be able to kill enemies wearing an armoured insert in one shot, pretty much making them useless against that too. Not to mention the fact that it's going to make your sniper deal less damage over longer distances by dropping the minimum damage down to just 50, lower than what it is with the standard ammo. So when you think about it, you're making the weapon considerably worse just to be able to extend that close range damage, which seems like a bit of a daft thing to do, especially considering the rifles aren't really designed to be used at these sort of ranges anyway. The Magnum Rams can dish out a little bit more damage to vehicles, but not enough to make much of an impact, unless a vehicle is pretty much just about to blow up anyway, 
A bit like Battlefield 1's cable, it's only equipped all the time. The final nail in the coffin, the 338 Magnum rounds are going to put you back $100,000 of in-game money, which is a bloody ridiculous amount of cash to be spending on something so crap. Just go for the straight pull bolt instead and don't waste your money. So those are my top 10 worst weapon attachments in the Battlefield games. But do let me know down below in the comments which ones you think are the worst, I'm sure you're probably going to do that anyway, and make sure you subscribe for more content on Battlefield and other games, old, new and upcoming. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll be seeing you in that next episode.